Hi, this is Artifacts Mars. I don't mean to ruin your day. Perhaps you've heard of this, for perhaps you haven't. Up in Canada, in Ottawa, a children's choir was uh, put out to sing an Arabic song uh, concerning uh, Mo Muhammad and his uh, exploits, uh, you know, killing Christians or converting them, depending on whether they converted or not, he would kill them. And this song celebrates that. I don't know if you heard this one or not. Uh, this is a traditional Arabic song. And I guess the kids did pretty good singing it. I'm very concerned that we have uh, children singing a jihadist song. This is what these people live for, is for killing and converting the infidels. And there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. There's, there are some peaceful Muslims, yes. But most of them are just there to convert or kill the infidels. Now, taking the next page, one sec. Okay, here's another page, autoassism.com. Apparently disinformation rag. As of late Sunday, nearly 700,000 people looked at YouTube posting a mass choir of 285 children from Ottawa and Kingston's French public schools for performing Taylor Badru's Elena, a historical song that was apparently sung when Prophet Muhammad sought refuge in Medina. We were certainly not expecting this kind of response when we did it. Robert Phelan, the choir director with De La Salle's high school, said late Sunday, it's just tremendous and we cannot ask for anything more. Early each year, the school organizes a Christmas pageant that brings in the choirs from ten French public schools and one Kingston for performances. For the first time this year, the event included music from the Muslim world. Each year, we try to incorporate songs from different parts of the world, said Philan. Philian. We've done Hebrew songs, Catholic songs, songs from Germany, and songs from Haiti. This year, I wanted to include something from the Muslim world. It wasn't easy. Philly and explaining Islam does not have the kind of choral tradition common to Christianity and hence there's hardly any music in terms of choirs. A colleague of Philly's, Laura Holly, found the uh, traditional song that with the inclusion of melody can be recast in a choral arrangement. Philian and Holly presented the material to local imams to make sure that what they intended would be suitable. We were very ca careful to find the right song. We wanted to make sure the song we planned, were planning to do wouldn't give offense. Judging from the reaction on the YouTube video, it was the right call. No surprise there. Some interpreting it as a symbolic welcome to Canada, to the recently arrived refugees. Fillion, however, emphasized that the choice of this song has nothing to do with liberal government's plan to bring in thousands of refugees from Syria. You that is bullshit. You, sir, are a liar. Indeed, the song and pageant were planned long before the arrival of migrants. You are a liar, 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 pants on fire. I uh, better learn to tell the truth, uh, Mr. Fillion. Unbelievable. Now I'm going to show you, uh, InfoWars does a lot of research on this stuff. I'm going to show you the InfoWars site. This one is being uncooperative anyway, so we'll skip to, uh, InfoWars and show you what.
Okay, uh, this song celebrates the Battle of Tabuk. Uh, after Muhammad finished it. That uh, battle is in historical dispute because uh, we don't even know if the two armies fought, but on one side you had the Islamic Jihadists, and on the other side you had the uh, Byzantine army from the Byzantine Empire. And they supposedly fought it out, and Muhammad took refuge in Medina. The original composition is the original work by Ottawa based composer and music Laura musician Laura Hawley but is influenced by influenced by Tala El Badru Elena and Ottawa Citizen reports that peace concludes with a section influenced by a traditional Muslim call to prayer blended with Tala El Badru Elena. Holly also denied the theme was welcome to the refugees, but Prime Minister Justin Trudeau tweeted his approval of the song. The Quran refers to the battle by calling on Muslims to fight and kill non-believers until they pay the jizya which is a tax, with willing submission and feel themselves subdued. Jizya is a crippling tax on non-Muslims, which is currently imposed on Christians in the Middle East by ISIS under the threat of execution, taking their wives as sex slaves. After Muhammad and his army arrived in Tabuk, Jewish and Christian tribes in the area where Muhammad was was converted to Islam, while Ju Muhammad also sent a letter to the Christian prince of Ela Allah, Elia, threatening him to convert to Islam, pay the jizra, jizya, or be killed. In summary, the children are basically singing a song which celebrates the subjugation and submission of Christians to Islam after thousands of Muslims migrated and took over a large portion of territory. Given this history, perhaps it would have been less provocative simply to have the children chant Aloha Akbar instead. Uh, thank you, uh, Alex Jones. And you can check all this information out. He's quite right. So this is a jihadist song that this uh, dirtbag had these kids sing. It's just disgusting. And very scary. I tend to think, I'm looking at things that are going on, and my thinking is we're going to be hit at some point in the not too distant future here. Uh, all that buying up in Missouri, people scoping out that uh, Bagnell uh, Dam that I was talking about. Oh, yeah, something's going on. And it's probably going to be big. In the meantime, uh, here we have a clear example of the mental disorder of liberalism on parade. These kids being made to sing a jihad song. Disgusting. Abhorred. I don't know how can anybody can listen to this and not be infuriated. Wake up, people. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. As a matter of fact, Samaras, thanks for watching.